Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Now in this video we will be looking at Memos, which is a note taking app and that's all it really does. And if you're like me and you, look, you love self hosting and you, again you're just looking for those services that just do what you need it to do, this is what you're looking for if you're looking for a note taking app. So let's jump straight into Memos. I'll show you my instance that's running in Docker. I'll just show you around how it all works and then I'll show you the GitHub page and then I'll show you how you can self host it and where you can get the Docker Compose file. So let's jump straight into my instance of Memos. So this is my instance of Memos that I have up and running on a Docker container. So as you can see from straight away, it's kind of like a, it's almost like a Twitter page, right? Like you kind of just got your posts, uh, like your little notes, and then that's it. So let's just start from the start and we'll work our way through it. So straight away on the home page, you can see in the top left that I'm logged in as myself. And I've made two little posts and they are kind of like marked by categories by using a hashtag. So like the hashtag video idea. And then we've also got whether or not you want them public or um, private so you can see kind of up here you can so if people aren't even logged in and you maybe want multiple people being able to access this and make notes and share things like that then you can make it public to everyone and then those public posts they kind of show up under the explore tab but we that's kind of jumping ahead of ourselves we'll just backtrack a little bit so at the top what we can do is we can just make a simple post right so like hello this is a note okay and we can add a little hash tag, which is kind of just how you track your posts if you want. So I've already got two, which is like banter and video idea. So we can make another one, which is just, let's just call this YouTube. We can add like a little code snippet. Um, so I don't know, this is a code snippet. Um, and that will just come up as a code block. What we can also do is add like a little checklist, you know, all that kind of good stuff. And we can also add an attachment as well. So you get two little options here, local file or external link. Just got a picture here, which I'll upload. And we can save this. Again, we can choose if we want it private, visible to members, people who actually have accounts, and public to everyone. Let's make this public. Hit save. And what you can see now is all those sort of sections, right? So we've got the image. We've got the little list that we didn't put anything in. We've got the code snippet where you can put code, of course, and you're just your general note. So, and on the right hand side, you can see how we can track those tags. So if I wanted to see the YouTube ones, we can click here and it'll filter it down. Video ideas, filters it, filters it down and banter, I have none, so nothing pops up, okay? And you can tick the same tag again and it will show everything. The daily review tab, we can just kind of go through here and depending on the day, it will show you what you posted on that day and also if there's public posts, what other people have posted, but it's just me, right? Resources just tracks the media on your post that you've got. So I've uploaded an image and it shows up. The reason it's showing up twice is because I made a test uh, post before, so the media is still up here. If we go explore, again, so explore will show you the public post set. So if you've got multiple people on here making posts, the explore one is just how you can see what you, other people are posting that have made things public. So you could use this for like a, a small team or if you've got, you're working on something and everyone kind of wants to share notes, I don't know, there's a lot of use cases here. Um, so it's pretty cool. Archived, so this is that one that I said I made before when I was playing around and testing, and you can see this one's been archived, so it pops up here. So if you wanna archive any more, you can just come down here and then click archive, and now that will show up under archive. Simple as. Under settings, we've got the my account, so you can make sort of access tokens. So um, they've got an, a phone app, so I can actually connect to my phone app uh, I can connect my phone to the application that I'm running in Docker and then I can save notes and stuff on the go, providing that you've got the connection back to the Docker container where you're hosting it, right? I just do that via a VPN. If we come under preferences, we can see that, you know, you can just, the simple preference settings that you're used to, change the language, you can change the uh, theme, light, very bright, or dark mode, or just to follow your system. Default memo visibility, it explains itself uh, daily review time offset um, that's this one up here the daily review uh, I don't know really what the offset does I guess if like the time zone or something isn't quite right and you need to offset the time I'm assuming I don't know and then the double click to edit so if you double click a post you can edit it and another really cool thing is you can actually set up a telegram bot so you can I believe you can message to telegram bot and it will make a post for you 
um, that, that feeds back through here, which is pretty cool. If you want to manage users, this is where you can manage them. Um, system settings. So this one here is kind of where you can see your version, see how big your database is, and then just some tweaks that you want to do. You know, do you want to allow people to be able to sign up, um, disable the password login? So if it's just kind of self-hosted internally, you don't need to worry about passwords. Again, all of this stuff kind of speaks for itself. Under storage, we can see that we're just using a local database, but if I wanted to use an external database, I could as well. And then we've got the single sign-on. So if you wanted to actually create your own single sign-on, so rather than using the local user accounts, you can do that. So yeah, you can definitely set this up if you want. So it gives you plenty of options, but again, it's just focusing on that one thing you need it to do, which is note-taking, right? You can make it more complicated or um, complex, I should say, uh, as you like, or you can keep it nice and simple and run it internally. So that is essentially it. So let's just, I'll quickly show you the GitHub page and I'll leave a link in the description and then I'll show you the Docker Compose so you can spin this up for yourself. And you can see here, it's all, it's all open source, all that good stuff. Their main website here, which is Use Memos, which will show you all the information you need. Again, a link to this will be in the description. And you can actually get a live demo of this if you like. So if you click on live demo, you can just have a play around yourself. And I believe they give you the credentials. Yeah, they do. So you can hit sign in and you can play with the uh, memos without even setting it up yet, just so you can get a feel for if you like it or not. Cool. So you can see, yeah, you can play around and yeah, get a, get a feel for it before you install it yourself. So the main thing that we're probably wanting to look at is how do we run this ourselves? So uh, I have a Docker Compose file. So if I just go nano, Docker Compose, very straightforward, okay? So under version, sorry, under services, we've just got the one service, which is memos, and we are using the image, and then we're just naming the container memos, and we just have a volume set up, which is memos here, which is mounted into the Docker container to store all of our data and our configuration. And it's just on port 5230, okay? So I'll show you, I'll just do, I'll, I'll show you how to stand this up and the command to do. I've covered this many times, but for those that are interested in, hey, I have to compose file, how do I stand it up? It's very straightforward. So we can just do a docker compose up hyphen D, you hit enter, and everything in that compose file will start up. And then you go to your IP address on port 5230. As you can see here, my IP address, port 5230, and you'll hit your um, memos page and you'll be good to go. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Nice and simple. So um, this video was very straightforward and that, sometimes that's just how self-hosting is, right? Especially when you're using Docker uh, and containers and Docker Compose. You get your compose file, docker compose up, log in, hit the service, do whatever you want, and you're good to go. So that's how it is with memos. Um, and I, I'll leave all the information you need in the description of this video. Uh, a link to my book stack where you'll find the compose. So that's why uh, if you see a link to the compose, it's going to a book stack. That's my book stack where I host everything. So that's where you can find the compose file. Uh, besides that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Have a great one, guys. Bye-bye.